today we're making dessert crepes with a boozy and buttery orange sauce known as crepe Suzette. In the last video we learned how to make crepes and in this video we'll learn how to set things on fire. The most important ingredient in the sauce are oranges. I find that the zest is best from navel oranges, but the juice is best from Valencia or juice oranges, so I got some of both. We only need one navel orange for zest. Don't be too diligent with scraping your orange. You only want the orange part. That's the delicious aromatic part. The white pith underneath is bitter and you don't want to get any of it into your sauce. I'll save a bit of skin for garnish. Now the juice oranges. We'll need enough of those to produce two cups of juice. That's usually six to nine, depending on how juicy they are. This will make enough sauce for eight crepes. I know what you're thinking. Can't I just buy orange juice? No, absolutely not. What about that super expensive organic kind that's not from concentrate? No, orange juice is very perishable. That's why all commercially produced orange juice goes through the oxygen removal process, pasteurization, or both. Unfortunately, that strips off all the flavor. So stop whining and start squeezing. Think about it this way. You are proactively burning the calories you're about to eat. Periodically clean out the seeds and pulp from your strainer. Yay! Finally! After seven oranges, I got myself two cups of juice. Let's dump all the juice and zest into a 10-inch stainless steel skillet. Add a third of a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and bring it all to a boil. Keep cooking on high heat, whisking occasionally until the liquid turns slightly syrupy. It will be roughly reduced by half. Add a pinch of salt and three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Whisk until butter dissolves. The aroma of the sauce is just intoxicating. Now the fun part. Let's add a quarter cup of Grand Manier. I suggest you pour it from a cup, not directly from the bottle, in case it ignites. Hold a lighter or a match to the area where you pour the new liquor and wait for it to light. It usually takes several seconds. No matter how concerned you are that your liquor is not lighting, you cannot bring your face close to the pan to check. Because when it goes, it goes. And I assume you want to keep your eyebrows. If your liquor didn't light, don't worry. Just boil the sauce for a couple of minutes to evaporate the alcohol. Shake your pan a bit to make sure all the alcohol has a chance to light. This is a very convenient dessert for entertaining. Both the crepes and the sauce could be made ahead, but I'm guessing you might want to save the flambe for your guests. Once the flames subside, you have yourself a sauce. Let's move it to a measuring cup and assemble the crepes. Leave about a quarter cup of sauce in the skillet. Pour some sauce onto a plate and place a crepe on top. First the ugly side down, and then the pretty side down. Fold the crepe in half, coating it thoroughly with sauce. And then in half again. When you have one saucy crepe, put it into the skillet where you cooked your sauce. Repeat with remaining crepes. I usually serve two per person, so eight crepes would serve four. I like to overlap my crepes, fanning them out in a pan, and then tuck the last crepe under the first one. Pour the remaining sauce over your crepes and warm them up over medium-low heat until bubbly and hot. If your crepes were cold when you started assembling them, you might want to cover the pan for a minute or two. Just watch them carefully so that they don't burn. Remember a bit of skin we left on our navel orange? I'll use my coarse zester to remove it and garnish our crepes. 
of course that's completely optional. Besides, what normal person has two different zesters in their house? This dessert is an absolute showstopper. It's such a shame we don't see it in restaurants these days. I always marvel at the incredible desserts that came out of the French kitchens a hundred years ago. Oh, pardon me, the food critic just got home from school. Let's see what he thinks. I think that's a thumbs up. For more ways to ignite your passion for cooking, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.